And welcome back to the fight night of the Team Gravity. I have with me here Team Gravity's very own Sir Robin. My name is Jack Attack, and we are going to get into the main event just shortly. We've got Scarlet versus Huck. It's going to be a best of seven. Uh, Sir Robin, how do you feel? I'm so excited. I really hope we make it to, to game seven. Yeah, me too. Definitely, uh... All the way to the end. You know, of course, to see Inferno Pools, the main reason, you know, you want a best of seven and go to the best of seven is so you can see that Inferno Pool. <laughs> best map NA, as everyone knows. Oh, goodness. It's it's almost a, a crutch. You know, you, you kind of want to see it, but at the same time, to have a game seven, to have it end on Inferno Pools, it's a little disappointing. Absolutely. All right, getting right into it, we've got spawning here in the top part of the screen, over slightly to the right side in the corner. It's Acer's Scarlet. Bottom half le left hand corner, we have in the red trunks, Evil Geniuses, Huck. All right, very nice. So, here we begin the epic, epic battle. We saw a ZBT, we saw the TVP, and finally the PVZ. No more swarm hosts out. Uh, the patch has patched them super hard, and pretty much no one builds them anymore. Uh, since that's happened, what have you been doing late game, uh, ZBP, Sir Robin? Oh, I don't know if you want to know about that. <laughs> it's uh have you been really... just losing is losing what you've been doing <laughs> late game <laughs> just a little bit you know I've transitioning been trying to into ggf 10n <laughs> it's, it's a good transition sometimes to make sometimes I, I the only something. transition i do something a little a little weird not enough zergs do it i don't think i think there's potential maybe i'm just not good enough but uh i love to go into a mass muta style that forces out a lot of phoenixes and then you mm. go burrow and festers and overseers spread across the map observers can't keep up with the phoenixes or the mutas you unburrow the infestors land money fungals on the phoenixes rinse and repeat until you can break them nice. and sometimes you got to get uh, vipers out in order to also do that especially you know if he has an archon ground army that's chasing your your mutas and such mm. sometimes you'll need those vipers for blinding clouds or abducts but uh it's a very gas intensive if you if you know investors oh, vipers not to mutas. interrupt you too hard here but we've got something fancy happening already oh inside yeah inside the base of huck is another base of scarlet Heard you like bases, so there's a base in your base, and we're gonna see exactly what happens here. Sometimes you can go for a little bit of a roach play. Um, have you? Uh, are you? Are you sometimes a proxy hatch guy, <laughs> or or you just completely avoid just, that strangeness? <laughs> just a little bit. I only, you know, I uh, I I'm kind of like cats. We had a we had a similar style in Wings of Liberty, and mm. surprisingly enough, I beat MC at MLG only one game. With a, okay, with a, all right. a hatchery, proxy hatch. So Nice. Been known to do it, just a little bit. But I actually absolutely love what Scarlet's doing here. And if you're wondering why it's working, it's because the dynamic of the probe having to run in circles, it forces Huck to kind of look at the probe. And while he's kind of microing in a circle, preventing the hatchery from going down, Scarlet sneaks in the drone. And if Huck doesn't look at the minimap and sees, sees a tiny little blob, Little, little dot running across mm. his pro, his uh, his forge, then he's gonna miss that miss that drone, and then something like this will happen. Oh, and this is cool. This map even has that backdoor ice. So if you set up in this position, it's really nice. We do have the roach horn coming down, and so far we have uh, absolutely zero percent of scouting from Huck. He has no idea is about to destroy him directly in his base. He, oh, she gets cool. burrow too. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh wow, this is really intense. Okay, he's gonna come up there. All right, the scout is off. The reaction is on. The APM and heartbeat simultaneously rising from Huck here. He's going to have to figure out exactly how to defend. He throws down a pylon. He has no power in the main at all. He can't do any sort of quick cannons or nice, anything like that. Quick cannon, yeah. 
Oh wow, this That's... uh this first roach is already going to be out. Burrow very quick uh to research as well. It's a very short research. And uh ooh, here it is. He's gonna move in with the Zealot and all these roaches here. That Zealot getting target fired down very quickly. Nicely done here by Scarlet. She's going to move back in that cannon, like we said before, on its way. But uh could get targeted down here. No, a little bit of uh zoning here going on as well. Uh, that's oh man, that uh Zealot there getting in. Almost killed a single roach. Oh, yes, and the first roach is dead. Uh, very difficult to deal with, though. This queen is absolutely going to fall. And, uh, you know, that's a really good uh, good hold there. Because it's very difficult to get queens out here. Queen's very valuable, although not doing as much as the roaches. We got a stalker coming in. Nice. He's going to be able to... And Burrow is done. This is where it gets really annoying and frustrating for Huck. He's got to figure out how to deal with this. Oh, the Burrows. Uh -oh. And now, like, what what can he do? He can wait for this cannon to finish. And guess what? All five of these roaches are going to come in. Six of these roaches are going to come in. If they can kill the cannon, they can all survive. And the cannon is absolutely killed. Not even canceled here. Absolutely brutal. Oh, my God. What a way to open up this series. Scarlet with the Boro Roach play. Now, Puck is retreating over to his natural. He already has a cannon up over here. So he'll be able to detect for this face. But he's only got a little five bit of seconds. production. Oh, the Nexus Cannon, quite strong. I don't know, though. There's a lot of units here. You should be able to focus on that without too much problem. Oh, oh and just borrowing in time, the last second. Ah, oh, one Roche falls. Kill and, the uh, queen. So many units over here. I'm surprised. No creep spread just yet. Uh, maybe sticking around. Uh, hoping for some transfuses a little bit later on. He's going to be focusing this down. Um, very difficult to, to do here. Oh, man, just barely misses this. A uh, little bit of action now. The robotic facility is up, and this is great for a couple of reasons. One, obviously, the attack and two, uh, Huck can begin to crank out Immortals off of this one base economy. Uh, unfortunately, he has no gas over here, just starting these simulators right now. This Nexus is falling quickly. The Burrow Roach Micro is holding, and it looks like this Nexus is going to go down. Observer has arrived, but is it too little too late? At this point, the macro of Scarlet is reigning supreme here. Only a few units able to defend. That cannon is very nice, uh, but we have no Nexus cannon. And GG, Scarlet starts it off with a really cool play there. And it all came from sneaking a, a drone in. If, if it's not snuck in and you don't have that deceit, that doesn't work. But if you time it right, you you make you make Huck think that you're thinking about expanding and that's what you're focused on. Then he focuses on that, and mm -hmm. you get that drone in, and you get a free win in a sense. Yep, absolutely, really, really well done there. Nice little mind game by Scarlet. So our next game will be on another one versus one map. And uh, we may be able to see a little bit more of the standard play. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Scarlet, <gasps> my god. But she is not just a cheesy player. She has a great, gigantic range of play, uh, as does Huck. These are two absolute titans in the North American StarCraft scene. And uh, they, they have a wide, wide range of skill and can get into the late game as well as the mid and all of the other games. And we are very likely to see some excellent macro games as we go on into this best of seven series. All right. And yeah, so Coda Ellie. Now, something that I've been um, that I've been thinking about in uh, on this map in particular, um, I saw Bio Ice take the third. That's sort of closest in in like as the crow flies or as the mutalisk flies, as it were, uh, to the main base rather than the one that goes sort of straight in a line out to the side, um, and that kind of prevents uh, sentries from becoming too strong because there's a lot more space to micro around. What have you been favoring for a third base in this matchup uh, on this particular map? I would just go for the uh, the third base that makes kind of more of a line or an arc rather mm. than the triangle. But, uh, you know, it does make it more vulnerable to some kind of proxy on the, on the, <clears throat> on your fourth base. If you don't properly right. scout and you don't properly, it's also actually a proxy right above the rocks. Cause you can warp in on the low ground. You put a proxy pylon where those rocks are. There are two sides to those rocks. And if you mm -hmm. put a, proxy pylon on one of those rocks it can be 
it's hard to scout if you don't have an overlord there and then you're wondering where the hell is this proxy pylon you know right so, right so it can it can be it can be tough you think you cleared that side of the map and then you didn't so uh but i on this map i you know i'm a big muta player as i was explaining at the beginning of last game that i have a quite weird late game style that i think has more potential if i was a better player <laughs> but uh this map actually with these rocks you gotta find time to get these rocks down because if you don't get these rocks down there's no possibility of counterattack. no kind of it, you can wrap around all the way around but mm. it just makes it that much harder and that much slower of a counterattack or base trade and uh it just it leaves less avenues for the zerg to surprise the protoss absolutely not really able to take uh, advantage of that zerg mobility that we all know and love those fast fast units and of course even faster when you add in the creep spread scarlet here going in for the pool first so she's gonna be able to have a little bit of oh huck over here the little bit of uh mind gamey shenanigans does not oh does not have a um for a second there i thought i made a mistake does not have the forge up so this is a fake cannon rush, or like the, I mean, it's almost like the old manor pylon, right? And last second cancel. 25 minerals, but Scarlet didn't overreact at all. Well, it did force out two lings before the queen, which, you know, is, is some damage. And it also forced a drone to go down there, and the drone going down there paid for the cancel, and then the two zerglings is just icing on the cake. So, she, uh, Huck did get a little bit da damage done, and, uh... So I'm sure he was, he was happy to see the... I'm not sure if he saw the, the fast links, but... Uh, but yeah, he definitely he definitely got some something done. Yep, uh, Scarlet coming in and scouting that, uh, that Nexus now. Uh, Huck going ahead and, you know, it's just a generally well-balanced play here. Nothing too greedy uh, from either player here. And um, all the things sort of gearing up. We are waiting for that tech to come down from the Protoss to find out what kind of the angle Huck is going to go for in this particular map. Oftentimes, Protoss uh, are the aggressor in these kind of uh, in these kind of scenarios. This particular Absolutely. point in the game. And look at look at his Chrono. He just burned a Chrono, but he was sitting on a good bit of Chrono boost, and he's Chronoing out a Stalker. I wonder what else he's saving that, that Chrono for. Yeah, um, it looks like he's uh, just cast another one. Then on the yeah it looks like the probes over there uh, you can oftentimes tell a lot about what Paras is doing by where they're spending their chrono boost um, very useful little bit of scouting information when you can manage to get it uh, it's, one, it's, Go for it. it's another it's another one of those you know you're talking about how how much you appreciate the meticulous little little uh, details and that's one mm. of the things I just picked up on Huck you know he saved one of his chronos on his main base for his natural and it's because he already had 16 mining in his main base so yes the probe can spawn and but then it takes time to go all the way down to the natural saving that chrono for the natural he sees a benefit in that and that's one of those little minute details that you know a mm. lot of people don't pick up on absolutely and we do have stargate coming in from huck third base form scarlet so it's all about being able to defend this economic edge that scarlet is going for here in the meantime we have some a little bit of harass with a couple of zealots across the map. Always a healthy thing to do to send a couple of zealots. Uh, maybe a stalker if you can. This wall is completely done. All safe. Absolutely no problem defending this at all. What we're more looking for is this oracle. Now, Scarlet Incoming moving in at overlord. precisely the right time. Look at this. She's going to scout not only that there's a stargate, but exactly when the oracle is on its way. However, we don't have, I think, any spore crawlers at all. There they are, starting just now. Um, Queens, pretty good, being able to zone out the Oracle here and there, but uh, Oracles can get quite a few kills in the meantime, and is going directly for the main here. Yeah, and we're seeing third Queen, but no creep in between the bases, so it's going to be a little delayed. Let's see how many kills it gets. All right, managed to get out alive with three kills. Uh, pretty solid defense from, uh, from Scarlet there. Uh, three kills, not all the stuff that you uh, would ideally want. Oh my god, is she going to... Wow. Excellent play. Huck tries to sneak out there in between the bases, but Scarlet is ready with all three of her queens in position. 
It might have even been a misclick accidentally clicking home. Mm. Definitely uh, a possibility here. Scarlet is going to scout this third base coming up, and that is a sort of critical moment here. Does she go for the fourth base herself? She is droning heavily right now and going and into upgrades. So this is what I was talking about earlier, that when she plays against Star Stargate, she likes to go the double upgraded Ling style, and uh, mm. we'll see that that's how she she plays this one. Well, looks like opting for a little bit of a, a change up here, going for the Roach Horn. We'll see when the upgrades come down exactly how this is going to pan out, and we have that patented uh, Crete spread coming out from Scarlet, spreading all across the map, nice and uh, and wide, as it were. We have a Void Ray, a singular Void Ray, making uh, his way across the map, while in the meantime we have a little bit of Zealot Harass on the other side. Bit of positional play here from Huck. Going to get pushed out by this Queen. Queens, despite their, you know, it's just like, oh, it's a Queen, it's this macro unit. They're quite good against Void Rays, particularly. Uh, the Void Rays don't get any of their bonus damage against the Queen, and the uh, Queens are quite beefy units at 175 hit points, despite the fact that their DPS, uh, DPS is uh, relatively low. Yeah, and with the, the the amount of its resources the Void Ray costs, it's, oh, it's yeah. just not worth sacrificing even a little bit of health to kill to to hurt a to hurt a queen. So just pulls back there. Looks like she is positioning herself to get a fourth base at that triangle position, and it's it's also because of that creed spread. If that creed spread wasn't there, she might have decided to go for the uh, the other the other fourth. But uh, it does look like she she's going into the Roach Hydra style. A double upgrades towards range, and um, she's already working her way to an infestation pit. So looks like she's going to try and do probably some kind of quick roach hydra viper timing. Yeah, absolutely. We got a little bit of a run by here with the lings. Uh, one cannon up in good position. A warpin is going to mostly ward this off, and in the meantime, Huck making a pretty strong push out for the fourth, and it looks like going to get three drones here. Not all that much. This is going to be. Very likely a cancel. I don't. The thing is, the position with these force fields so. over here are really yeah, nice. Very good. difficult to, to deal with, and there's the cancel. Um, running in, trying to do some damage with those hydras, but pulls out. Just a very classic move. As soon as that uh, recall got introduced, you know, it's just a very all right. Running with a bunch of units, cancel a base, jump back, uh, rinse and repeat, and double expansion here from That's Scarlet the, in response. I love that decision. You know, when, mm. when you get your fourth base canceled, it's you risk having your fourth base die later even more so. And so you have to have a, even a backup, not only just for production, because your fourth base is, a, is production. And the fact that her production got delayed, now she needs more. But it's also if she ends up having oh, to do some kind of counter. Oh, and we've got a drop coming in in the north over here. Keeping that sentry in the warp prism, interestingly enough, just dropping off three zealots over here. Huck is just gonna pull back. No major play going on. No major damage being dealt. Uh, perhaps uh, just opting, didn't like what he saw, moved out of there. He does have that observer positioned very nicely in the main. You can see all the units coming out there. Uh, so there's a good idea about what exactly is going on. Uh, and lots. Scarlet's positioning herself for a Roach Hydra uh, Broodlord composition here, and I think she's she's gonna get away with it. I'm not sure if Huck realizes what's going on. Do you have a bit of a gateway explosion out from Huck? Who uh, is uh, finishing up right now, and he is moving out. Uh, probe coming as well. That might be for the expansion, or that might be just for a general attack. Another warp prism move in here. Hydra's in position. Excellent reaction time from Hux. Keeps that warp prism alive. And yeah, it looks like both of these uh, potential fourth bases uh, got up, and now we have a five base Zerg. If you if you look at that observer, that observer just scouted the Viper popping, but just west of that observer is a greater spire morphing and no hallucinated phoenixes in the past minute or two no warp prism scout of, the, of that location the warp the observer is not seeing it you know huck might just be completely caught off guard with a roach hydra viper broodlord army mm. comp. and as a zerg player like what are you most afraid of when you're going for this transition uh as a reaction from the protoss here well you know he's going she, uh, Huck's going for a four base right now, and he still only has one Stargate, and you definitely need a second Stargate to play it 
passively and macro. Mm. Or Huck could go for, try to go for the throat right away. Uh, the Vipers did come out before Broodlord, so Acer, you know, Scarlet wasn't trying to cut any corners. She did it kind of right, where uh, if you did try to do a th three base c push and try and kill Scarlet before she got to that composition, she she was safe. She didn't cut cut any steps. So I'm not sure if it would have really would really would have worked, but Huck definitely needs a second Stargate here. All right, and we have three three coming up. A little repositioning of spine crawlers here, uh, staying as safe as possible against this massive uh, Protoss death ball, as it were. And more prism still on the side here. A little bit of positioning going on. Nice little flanking group of roaches over here. Uh, getting ready to move into position, deal some harass if the timing is right. Look at this timing. The scouted phoenix, oh, is he gonna scout? Oh, just barely missing this flank group and very patient. Scarlet is gonna wait to the moment where that army moves out and we do have the army out on the creep moving forward, way out of position to deal with this attack by Scarlet. Excellent patience coming in. She's gonna kill these two cannons quite quickly and move in in the meantime. We have Huck moving in as well oh, to the uh, third base. And oh, it's, oh. it's just it's so perfect for Scarlet because she just maxed out after making five moves. So she wanted to get rid of those roaches and to force a recall to be able to kill the other half of the Huck's army that tried to go after the third base and then do some probe damage as well. She's She cannot be happier right now. Yep, absolutely. And the transition is scouted. Huck knows exactly what's going on. Plus three and blink finishing up. That classic 17 minute, 50 second blink timing that we all know and love. Um... <laughs> But yeah, some more static D coming down from Scarlet. Going to get herself into a nice position. That is the big part of the Broodlords. You cannot really go back and defend when you're across the map. So that static D is going to help a lot with that big warp in over here. And going for an attack at the same time. Excellent positional play from Huck. And Scarlet's going to have to split really well to deal with this. All of these zealots, my god, so difficult to deal with. Really nice getting into that choke position with the... Um, with the queen there, but it uh, ends up not being enough. These zealots are dealing tons of damage. In the meantime, we over have at the fifth base. Lots of damage going down as well. Might be able to focus down this hatchery. The army is a little bit off, and more warping. Oh my god, the Greater Spire is very vulnerable right now. Uh, that base gets destroyed as well. And in the meantime, an attack in the front. <laughs> oh, look at that hallucinated Great, Archon. Oh my god. Oh my, and he's gonna save. <laughs> Three health. Scarlet saves with three hit points. Her greater spire, well done over there. Ends up losing the uh, the base over on the right, but it looks like we can breathe for a moment and see the results of the battling. And Scarlet comes out ahead. Absolutely, she she lost fifth base, but. She didn't have any defenses there. It was almost like she understood it was going to be collateral. And you just, oh, let me mm -hmm. trade this base to ensure I kill, you know, the front push or some kind of risky mass warp in at my greater spire. You know, Huck invested a lot of minerals into that, and we're seeing he actually has more gas than minerals right now, and that's mm -hmm. that's rarely the case as a Protoss player. So that's a big sign that you know he burned through a lot of his mineral income on those zealots hoping to kill that greater spire. Yep, absolutely. A really uh, heavy investment, triple-pronged attack from Huck. Lots of damage getting done, but in the end, it's all about, you know, how much you're investing in the attack and how much you get out of it, and Scarlet comes out ahead. Now, we have the transition here. Two Tempests on the way. <laughs> um, now, I've been playing scouted. a lot of Legacy of the Void, but correct me if I'm wrong, the massive, plus massive damage has been removed in the Heart of the Swarm as well. Correct. Uh, I I have seen some a, a number of games though where the the tempests still do do work against broodlords. It, it takes a little bit longer, but mm. it's still definitely a counter. It's just not as hard. Oh, nice abducts here. We're gonna be able to close it out. Oh, not exactly. It looks like these 
Colossus going to survive those abducts. Nice little move there from Scarlet. In the meantime, double pronged attack. We have an attack in the front and the main, and going in for that third base again in the back at the same time. All over the place, action everywhere. Storms going down. We have the Brute Lords staying safe for the time being, and that's a big purpose. If those Brute Lords can stay alive long enough to deal all the damage necessary, they're going to be in a great position in the bottom. The base is getting totally hollowed out over here. Uh, not those, those not any micro. Send those Void Rays. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the Brute Lords so look like they're going to get uh, absolutely very easily eliminated here, but. Uh, gonna have to trade two bases for it. Um, yeah. As long as Scarlet can reproduce to defend any sort of counterattack, I think she's gonna be in a good position. Two Vipers and a Corrupt. Not much units coming out at all yeah. from from Scarlet here. Uh, the both their incomes pretty hurt. I mean, Scarlet mm. does have a better income, but it's not the kind of income to to remax on. And with right. a 2,000, 2,000 army value, that's 4,000 resources. With only making 1,000, 1,000, that's going to take at least, you know, a couple minutes in order to, in order to actually have an army that's... This is a pretty Huck's scary push. force coming out of Huck here. Uh, going to be doing some light harassment in the meantime. And uh, normally these two zealots, not such a big deal, but in this particular moment, uh, with the economy as hurt as they are, that little harassment up in the north is going to prove absolutely detrimental in a significant way. Nice abducts there. Manages to get one Colossus, but look at this harassment in the top right. Absolutely so frustrating for Scarlet to deal with at this point in time. Yeah, these spore crawlers were her saving grace. It's really impressive to put those abducts and the power of those spores, but uh, once she loses that, that ground, I can't see her holding that wood base either. Oh, nice. Manages to pull in some Tempest there. Uh, get a little bit of damage, but this force from Huck is really difficult to deal with. He's got a lot of storms still, uh, potential feedbacks, and Scarlet very patiently, carefully going to be grabbing a unit here and there, buying time where she can, but the problem is she has almost no income after that attack, and Huck just backs off. Yeah, and with that new base up and running... Huck's going to start experiencing two base income while also still having an army value lead. And with Scarlet not being able to have better than two base income while also having a smaller army, she just doesn't really have an advantage in any in any sense in this game anymore. Going for pathogen glands, hoping to get some really nice fungals uh, to make this work, but it is going to be for certain very difficult to do. Uh, she is continuing to spread creeps. She's got a lot of information. She'll know when the attack is coming, uh, if and, and when it ends up showing up. But uh, having the units to defend is a complete another thing. We do have five infestors on the way. Should line up nicely with that pathogen glands. And if she can get some nice fungals here, she might be able to make some magic happen. Yeah, and she still has four vipers and... I mean, she def she's been holding on to a, a gas bank for quite some time, so she mm. decided, I need to spend this, and now she's going up to 10 investors. I wonder if she just keeps going. Yeah, at this point in time, right, you just want to get the value out of the resources that you have in the bank. You need to get those resources out of your bank and out in the field, and 12 investors is a way to do that. Um, might not necessarily be exactly what she needs right now. A little bit of scouting going in from the road, so she knows she's dealing with uh, that basically you know, 1.5 base economy. Uh, from Huck, and she's got her own 0.5 base economy going on uh, herself at that third base. <laughs> Finally, that uh, that once what was once a fifth uh, that is now a fourth coming up, uh, going to be making that transfer in short order. But I mean, neither player even has the money to build another expansion at this point. So just this very sort of strange scenario where it's difficult for either player to attack and a little bit risky. Exactly. There, it's at a point where any kind of loss of army can be game changing. The army they mm. have is the only thing they have. So nobody wants to full on commit right now. But it seems like Huck, with almost max out, is going for yep. it. Well, if there's time to go, he's got. He's, oh my God! So many full energy Templar. This is going to yeah. be absolutely brutal. Even the Infestors, nice fungal to start things off. That could be magic. The second Chain fungal it. land, it takes a lot of fungals. A oh third my fungal god. on the way. Oh, oh my, my god, god. is he going to lose all the Templar? Go down! Oh that is exactly god. what Scarlet needed. My god, those fungals. 
to Robin. How awesome was that to see? Oh man, just uh, phenomenal, phenomenal, right there happening. Just really great. I cannot. Oh imagine. man. Where you win that engagement, other than a, a, a money high ground fungal, because Huck didn't even have you know the vision to be able to just blink forward or something and snipe it. It was, it, it was there were knights and protected. When other yeah. when is there another instant where you have your infestors not just get completely melted when you try to go for that chain fungal? And yeah, so. it's such a difficult maneuver to pull off and. She absolutely nailed it, got in the right position, waited for the right moment, and now the attack is on. This base, the main source of income for Scarlet, is under attack. And, uh, you know, this force from Huck is still very strong, very difficult to deal with. Oh my god, the infested Terran. That is a lot of energy. Going to go ahead and uh, stop those reinforcements there. And that might be enough to push this attack back for the time being, protecting that income. That's the name of the game at this point in time. Uh, notice she's not even mining gas. Uh, from this base yet. Hopefully she'll get on that pretty soon. But after all that spending of uh, of gas on infestors, uh, I'm sure she's looking to add a little more meat into the army, as it were. Yeah, and these Roach run by is going to tell Scarlet that Huck's still only on one base, and anytime. Ooh, any kind we're going to get some worker kills, time. too. Yeah, with those infested Terrans, yes, she lost energy, but buying time to be able to max out, now she's maxed out. Look at that. Huck's not maxed out because Huck kind of. Oh, this Surprise. huge attack, though. Here's the fungals and lots of infested Terrans. Uh, oh, my God. Nice swarms on top of the infested Terrans. Does take a, a large chunk of them, but these Colossus falling down is absolutely awful for Huck. Oh, yeah. It makes those Hydras actually viable. Yep. Uh, continuing still to a couple fungal and infested Terrans. Uh, the energy is running out on these infestors. She's doing a great job of keeping them alive. It's a very important part of this. Um, but... Those storms coming down. One storm does kill all infested Terrans in the area as long as it's done. Oh my god! Everything falling down now for Huck, though. This might wow. be the end. He needs this army to defend the rest of his bases, and with a counterattack, this could be absolutely critical. This is it. The four Roach flank even started picking off some of those High Templars that had a storm left, and yeah, Huck, Huck doesn't have anything left. Yeah. I mean, positioning with, with the Tempest in the corner? For, for, you know, maybe, I don't know, getting yeah. yoinked and killed to death. Uh, you know, it's a really tough scenario here. He's going to do everything that he can, though. We do have this little counterattack of uh, Zealots over here. Going to be able to deal with these uh, four drones. But again, the main economy is over here. Ooh, nice positioning from these Tempests. Actually going to start place. picking off some investors. This needs to be dealt with from Scarlet here. Raising Colossus. <laughs> well, you know, if there was ever a thing that was good at killing Zerg things, aside from plus two blink, it was Void Raising Colossus. <laughs> this Observer, so critical to the success of this harassment. Oh my god, getting the hatchery down. And over here we have a big roach attack. This is the main source of income for Huck right now going down. And, you know, Scarlet just coming in and crippling it. This is absolutely brutal. However, nothing that shoots up in this area. This might be a chance. For, uh, for Huck to clear out this Roach army with Tempest and Void Rays. Yeah, now she just pulls back, gets a few more Hydras, and I can't, I can't really see Huck having any, any way to win this game. He just doesn't have the money to even do War Prism Harass or anything. Yeah, the income tab tells it all: 40 minerals, 20 minerals per minute for, uh, for Huck, and 100, 200 or so. For Scarlet. That's the low economy game that we're talking about right now. This might be it. It looks like the final battle. Huck's last chance to make this happen. The fungals are good. The infested Terrans are working out quite well. And GG Scarlet snatches victory from the jaws of defeat with some amazing infester play. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I couldn't think of a, a, a Zerg that could have won that fight except for Scarlet, because she mm. always has money fungals. It is the most impressive part of her play, is her ability to land money fungals. And there's no way she would have won that fight with a two to four Vipers and Mass Infester with a small little handful of Roach Hydra. That death ball of a Protoss mm. would have just stormed everything, killed everything, but 
killing that eight was like high almost Templars. Almost ten high Templar. Yeah, eight, eight, eight like or so that. high Templar with full energy, ready to full storm energy. absolutely everything. And God. storm good unit, yo, for real. Like th there's there's a reason why people say storm good unit is because it most absolutely, definitely is an incredibly effective spell. Um, especially against, you know, those Hydralisks, those low HP Hydralisks that were the bulk of uh, the DPS from Scarlet there. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> I just need a minute, you know? Just, whew! All right. That was, yeah. what was what, game two? We got, we got know, potentially right? five more games to go. This is oh already shaping up to be a fantastic series. So excited to, uh, to have the opportunity to cast this. Yeah, I just... It blows my mind because as a Zerg player, when I see those brood lords become vulnerable to those void rays, all I think is, "Oh God, all the voids are dead. You're dead." Like, or, or mm. all the all the brood, all lords, the brood are lords are dead. dead, dead. Yeah. And that follow up push was supposed to was supposed to uh, kill Scarlet, and it put her on the back foot. She lost both her fourth and fifth. She got put down to one and a quarter bases, being down four thousand army value. You're on the same footing as the Protoss, but you're down 4,000 army value, and somehow Scarlet brings it back. Absolutely amazing. Who says comebacks don't happen in StarCraft 2? I certainly don't. That was amazing. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those abilities that you have is with the Spellcaster units. They can make or break engagements, and uh, that's exactly what happened just there. Our next game coming up on Echo. A lot of fun shenaniganry can happen here on Echo. Wondering if we're going to see any sort of, uh, you know, high sentry play. There are a lot of choke points here. So the force field is very strong on this particular map. Uh, kind of reminiscent of that uh, that cloud kingdom in the, in the soul train era. Right, right. And one of the things that we saw Scarlet, I mean, even in that era, be so... Uh so great at was the investor play and that's one of the things i've seen here and on this map excel at as well you're talking about how force fields are great on this map and so are fungals if the protoss has to run up those tiny ramps i mean if the zerg has to so does the protoss so mm, absolutely those fungals those fungals uh can definitely can slow down or even just completely break a three base blink stalker push three base oh blink. yeah all so. kinds of different things can be just like absolutely mitigated by that. Spawning in the top section of this particular map called Echo, we've got EG's Huck. And spawning in the bottom right, we have in the pink trunks, Acer Scarlet. All right. So just game three now. I have game three. Getting excited for any sort of uh, any sort of shenaniganry that might fall, and so far nothing too crazy in the greed area for EG's Huck going to be opening with a gateway. And you know there w there was that time for a while where it was this question of like, oh you know you know should I go for a forge expand? Should I go for a gateway expand? I feel like that's always been this sort of back and forth thing happening in the meta uh, in PVZ. Um, but right now, I've I've pretty much only see players going for that, you know, going for that gateway expand. Very uh, rarely, in comparison, do you see the uh, the forty expands quite as much. Um, do you think that's like a, a product of the map pool, or uh, I think with forge forge expand, I think people when cannon rushes were a little a little more uh, of a threat. Mm. But I think nowadays most the majority of the Korean Zergs know how to properly defend against it because back in Wings of Liberty I felt like I was better at handling cannon rushes than a, a, many of the Korean Zergs and it was because mm. they would always pull drones and try it that way and a lot of times it's just better to expo somewhere else and let the guy cannon rush it and then cancel and be like congratulations you cannon rushed a part of the portion of the map that I no longer am trying to, uh, to reside so you know, I think as mm. cannons, cannon rushes started to be figured out, it became less uh, less of a threat, and it almost just 
in a sense, just delayed the Nexus. So if you were to kind of play that Forge style, I think people are just now starting to do Nexus firsts. But I, I really, I really uh, picked up on Scarlet. I really liked Scarlet's uh, spawning pool positioning. She, uh, she scouted for a proxy two gate at the same time of building her, her, her spawning pool. So mm. two birds with one stone. Absolutely. First time I saw that kind of a move was out of uh, out of TLO actually watching him and uh, he, he put his pool way out and I was always you know used to like all right build my pool I just build everything close to the hatch and that's fine. I'm like why are you building out there? He's like oh yeah you know just a scout and I was like the scout. <laughs> I was like it just like totally blew my mind in that moment in time and now it's just sort of like oh yes he has a scout of course. Uh, yes, the Scarlet <laughs> will put this base here for a scout and it was quite brilliant. But uh, you know at the time it was. Uh, is revolutionary to me and you know so far nothing too crazy just yet we are still waiting for the tech to come out from Hawk. he's banked up he, quite a bit of gas yeah he's he's delayed his uh, mothership core quite a bit you know when i go up against one gate expos you often see that mothership core much much sooner and it, and it helps push back these two links that are becoming so pesky. Now, mm. The links aren't in the base, but they could have been running in circles around the natural. I think Scarlet just respected Huck's possibility of having the Mothership Core, because if the Mothership right. Core spawns on top of those slow links, slow links actually can't run from the Mothership Core. They'll, uh, you'll lose at least one. So Scarlet being a little more conservative with those two links, keeping them alive out in the map rather than trying to run circles in the natural. We have, uh, by the way... Quite a few gateways going on here, yeah. don't we? We've got one, two, three, five gateways happening here, and uh, and no other tech out on the map. We do have it's a proxy pylon coming links. in. So this is looking like a pretty strong pressure build from Huck. Absolutely, some kind of five gate pressure and uh, slash all in. It does have two gases, so it's it's, it's either a potential of uh, tech switching or a potential of warping in mass stalker. Uh, certainly speed just started, so Mass Stalker and then a Zealot warp in after the fact could be really, really punishing to Scarlet here. Yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna see. Uh, she is cranking out the Zerglings. Uh, Zergling speed is going to be a little bit late uh, for this particular attack, Roach Warren, as well. And we're gonna just have to see how this is gonna come down to positioning. Nice little early moves here with the Stalkers, picking off with some free units, and it looks like... Alright, here it is. The stalkers. Yeah, the Lings against the Stalkers is a Zerg, that's what you want to happen, but a little bit of repositioning from Huck. The oh, Mothership yeah, Core has joined it. the fray as well, and this base is absolutely going down, and uh, very much like a uh, recall right here. Uh, going to be putting off just a little bit, using uh, some extra units. She's, oh wow, actually in a really great position here. Zealots right in Power front and that nice arc. Five more. Five more warping in. He's not stopping. Oh wow. Seven roaches on the it. way though. They might be an overcommit. Those seven roaches will hold this. Alright, we've got the roaches speed finishing up. It's all about this engagement. Nice little choke here though for Huck to engage in. These zealots are gonna do work for sure. Uh, Roach is coming in from the north, and here we go. Here's the defense. A lot of those Zerglings not being able to deal damage. Finally wrapping around, going for those Stalkers, nice. getting the good surround. Lots of damage coming in from these Roaches, and it looks like the recall is finally there. A little bit of scary moment there. Hot going through the throat. Oh, yeah, and it wasn't, it didn't even feel like a full on all in, because before mm. that push happened, Scarlet was at 38 harvesters, and Huck was at 41. So while that push was seemed like it was overcommitting with a recall and a better economy, uh, Huck's got a follow up to this. And oh, it looks absolutely. Like Scarlet's too, though. Scarlet's yep, going for uh, double upgrades. Double upgrades and going to poke out with these uh, these roaches as well. Clean up any proxy pylons on the map. She is scouting for this third base expansion. She's going to know. Huck is going for the third. Great force oh, fields. Ho, ho. nice force fields over here. Picking up some roaches basically for free. Yeah, the only thing I can think of that wasn't free was the fact that that poor little probe died to that one zergling. It delays his third just a little bit. He might not even take a third after kill killing that number of roaches, though. It's possible. Uh, I don't see any. There it is. There's that probe moving over to the 
base. Excellent Overlord positioning, of course, as always from Scarlet. Going to know exactly when this third base goes down and we'll be able to react accordingly. 1-1 one, one Ling upgrades coming in and the Lair finishing up as well. What do you think we'll see out of that? Well, she doesn't exactly have gas banks enough for any kind of Spire transition. It looks like, yeah, just Roach uh, upgrade, so Roach speed upgrade. That's really all mm -hmm. she can afford right here. This this attack's going to be scary. Oh, and nice again, little surround there for a moment. And uh, excellent force field's going to carve off some uh, roaches in the bottom side of the map. Roaches doing the best they can to uh, kill off one or two units here and there, especially those zealots. Yep, and once again, we we know this, that, you know, that this is just uh, pressure. And the only thing Huck's losing here is zealots, but look at his bank. He's got plenty of minerals. He can yeah, use going these. for plus two blank behind this, has a third behind this as well. Immortals beginning to be produced. Uh, we do have that infestation pit, so always that uh, potential for some uh, some aggression here in the Ling Infester play. We yeah. do have the melee upgrades coming in. Yeah, it looks like she felt like she couldn't afford 2-2, two, two, only plus 2 attack. I wonder if she decides to try and go for that later, or if she just start making infestors with the last, last of her gas. You know, and that's a that's a big part of this pressure from Huck, just always right in her face. Um, so it's very difficult as a Zerg player, I feel, to just be able to commit and be like, all right, yep, yeah, I'm just going to go for 2-2, two, two. we're going to be okay. And we do see that pathogen glance coming in, Infestor play en route. May we see more money fungals? So oh, I hope to... so. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like because of that Crete spread that was almost all the way... I mean, because of her creed spread in general, uh, mm. she's just in a great spot when it comes to her map control and also taking a fourth base so comfortably because she just she knows that it's safe and she can get there in time and no proxies mm -hmm. right next to it or anything like All that. Right. And she's gotten up to 40, 40 workers. She just needs to hold this. She can get those investors out in time, five of them. This is a big, scary push here from Huck. Huck has macroed up, gotten that third base going, and this is a three, bl three base plus two blink. Very, very strong right now. Very difficult to deal with. Is the Infestor play the answer? And he's oh, just yeah. being think, very uh, careful here. I think the Crete spread, you know, people talk about how Crete spread is powerful because of vision and stuff, but... The, those creep tumors actually just bought Scarlet more time. And for some mm. reason, Hux decided that after killing those tumors and distracting himself, he's going to kill rocks too. And that bought himself tough fungals. And there's a fungal. Oh, nice fungal right on top of those sentries. Another, another fungal coming in. Not exactly in the same another spot, one. but we do have this chain fungal. Oh, and targeting one more, one more. down. Oh my god, no recall anymore. And running out of force fields. Going to try to run up this ramp. Two force fields down. There are no force fields left. Scarlet can just run in here and absolutely decimate this entire army. Yes. Uh, Huck going to try to blink out and get out of there. With mind though, the economy of Huck is still very strong. Not any less weak than Scarlet's at the current moment. Uh, but Scarlet droning up super hard, going up to 83 harvesters in response to this, and even taking a fifth base. Very, very excellent defense from Scarlet, and she's going to leverage that advantage into a greater advantage as well as making a potential counterattack right here. Oh yeah, I mean, her. she's about to be 2-2 against 0-2, and the the most powerful thing for Protoss against Zerg are force fields. You gotta contain us and push us back, and with only one sentry. I mean, it does have three force fields, so it can buy a little bit of time, but, uh, you know, Huck's hurting on gas right here. He doesn't even have 100 gas, so he's, he's crippled in terms of gas. He's trying to get plus three. He's trying to get Colossus, Thermal Lance. He can only afford one more sentry, and the only way he's going to hold this is if somehow he, he, he lands the, the best force fields of his life because he cannot afford to, to have one misplaced force field. Oh, that's interesting. Infestors all on their own. It's going to get scouted. Blinks right on top. The Infestors starting to fall. This is a really critical part of the army of Scarlet. So many Infestors falling there. But this follow-up attack with Lings and Roaches dealing a lot of damage. The excess army of 
Puck not able to engage. We do have the Colossus joining the fray now. All the Zealots in the front. Excellent positioning. He's got to keep these Immortal alive so they can deal the damage they need to do. Oh my god. And more Infestors falling. This is absolutely disastrous for Scarlet. She really doesn't want this to happen. Luckily, she has the economy to back it up. But, oh, going to decide to take an engagement here. Really got to keep got those Infestors alive. Nice. Yeah, she got more Infestors coming up. This uh, Colossus and two Immortals in the back, though, being protected constantly by this gateway army and they're dealing out massive amounts of damage absolutely great time warp going to be able to pick oh, off wow, the blink. One of these investors the blinks are amazing and look at that that core high damage army over in the side doing so much damage 14 kills in the colossus 12 kills in the immortal 11 kills in the other mortal and they just walk back only shield damage and they'll be ready for the next attack yeah great play by by huck with the at the, in the in the center, blinking on top of those investors, but then again there, I mean he's got great plays. It's just he, sadly he, he after that engagement he's been down, and his plays have helped stabilize, but it's not going to secure him the win. He's going to have to find some other way to to pull this out. Mm -hmm. And it's about long-term advantage at this point, and Scarlet has the long-term advantage. The longer this game goes on, the more head Scarlet gets, and that is absolutely. In uh, you know, very big deal for Huck. He's gonna have to figure out how to deal with it. He's going to decide to go for this fourth base. If he can defend it, he'll be able to get into a nice position for this game. I mean, Creed spread at his door. Right? Look at this. I mean, absolutely gonna be a very difficult hold here. This may decide the entire match. The upcoming battle here. Photon Tan's trying to get in place, but it's a little bit too late. This is a perfect scenario for Infested Terrans. A lot of them get up tons of damage. Excellent force fields coming down, but is it going to be enough? The position of Puck is fantastic. Warping in more units here, keeping all of his Colossus alive, all of his important units alive, and all of these units just brushing up against the force field, taking lots of damage. Yeah. Uh, the Infested Terrans are starting to run out. The energy is starting to run out in these Infestors, and I think this is a hold for so, Huck. Excellently done. Hold. Hell yeah. I mean, those those Infested Terrans didn't even kill the, the building cannons. If they were maybe on hold position, they wouldn't have just worthlessly clumped into the force fields because those Infested Terrans didn't really do anything. And, and yes, Scarlet's maxed out, but she had no energy on an Infestors, and she has 20 Infestors, so that's 40 supply, that's Ooh, almost making worthless. a big move here with the units, and it's going to be a bit of a trade, one base for another, uh, but Scarlet has backup bases, so I would say it favors Scarlet. Scarlet. At um, play. However, this army from Huck is really scary, despite the fact that he's uh, behind a lot in supply. This is just a really difficult army to deal with, and how do you deal with it? Potentially tons of infested Terrans? Um, losing quite a few units over here, though. Uh, should be able to clean this up pretty quickly, and all these investors are out of energy. Yeah. Fortunately, though, speaking yeah, out of energy, so are the sentries. No force fields. Is this the end? These really high uh, gas units need to keep him alive. Huck has to get out of here with these three Colossus, and it doesn't look like he's going to. And even that, oh, man. What, I mean, what does Huck have left at this point in time? I mean, he is totally tenacious and fighting super hard against this, but this may come down to a game of numbers. It's just absolutely great decision making by Scarlet as well. In the, in the heat of the moment, it's so so easy to just ah, his army's going towards my fifth base. I need to defend it. I can't lose that, right? But Scarlet says my investors are out of energy. I need to buy myself time. Yes, I can't defend that location on the map, so what can I do? Okay, I'll trade damage for damage. I'll kill one of his bases, and he'll kill one of mine. That'll buy me time for investors to get energy. This looks like the final engagement here. Yep, uh, going to go back here. Trading out that energy just for only a couple of units, and... Ideally, if Huck can get an engagement when all these Infestors, keep in mind, a lot of the army supply for Scarlet is in these Infestors, and when they don't have energy, they're pretty much useless. Clock, however, is ticking for EG's Huck, mining out both of his remaining bases quite quickly here. Only about 500 per patch in his main base. Oh no, this is going to be a quick cancel and he is finding it more difficult and more difficult with time to be able to finally get another mining base up. Yep, and here we are. 
A little bit more units moving in here. Going to try to get this base once again. Absolutely, like I said, tenacious. Huck not giving up here, fighting it to the very end. And anything can happen here. He's got a lot of force fields saved up. Oh, these Corruptors moving in with the Stalkers out of position. He really needs to get those Corruptors down or get the Infested. Oh, the Infested Terrence coming out, pulling back. Oh, not pulling back and completely fine. He is really sort of going back and forth here, trying to kill these Corruptors without taking too much damage from the Infested Terrence. Nicely done over here, but again, as good an engagement as that may have been for Hawk, as much as he may have been able to micro out and, uh, and kill some Corruptors, he lost Colossus. Most importantly, this base is still not up. Yeah, I mean, his crutch is the Colossus. It's the only thing that's carrying him in this game. No storm in sight. And with these Corruptors, they're still in the game. He's got nine of them again. I mean, it's 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 going to be so hard to hold on to this lone, lone Colossus, which just, I mean, this fourth base is definitely not going up. Yep, there are those investors beginning to get picked off here, one by one. Uh, the problem is the fungal has landed on the Colossus, and the Colossus goes down. All the sentries go down. It's not much left for Huck here. He's got 11 stalkers, one Colossus, and an observer against a maxed-out late-game Zerg army. This is brutal, to say the least. I don't know yeah. a word that properly describes this scenario. But I'm just going to have to go with Brutal for the time being. <laughs> the main base, the second main base, completely mined out. The second base, on its way. Just a couple of mineral patches left. <laughs> There's oh, creep no. on in his third base now. Scarlet with the with the with the creep spread BM. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got bases all over the place. She could even afford to lose a couple of bases, and it wouldn't really make a difference to her. She's uh, you know got all the contingency plans necessary. Um, I don't even think when behind Dark Shrine applies here, and that applies so yeah. often. Uh, I don't even yeah. think that would be enough to, to come back here. It is quite difficult. This she, is uh, it, the maxed out push from Scarlet moving in here. All these Infestors, we are seeing the return of the Infestor. Fungal's falling down, all these Infested Terrans as well. Storm's going down to try to counteract it, but it looks like it's not going to be enough. GG, Scarlet wins again. Great play, great play. Absolutely uh, phenomenal play from both players and total credit goes to Huck for hanging on and making it work. You know, any lesser Zerg might have been caught off guard and, and allowed Huck to claw back in the game. Scarlet absolutely, you know, making sure every little detail is covered. Okay, if you can do this kind of a thing, you might try for a trade. Well, I'm gonna trade harder and we're gonna be fine. I have these bases all as contingency bases. I can just transfer, I'm gonna stay ahead. You know, very, very patient play from Scarlet and uh, finally closing out in the end there. What an epic late game PVZ. Yeah, and it's just those those fungals, she knows how to land them. She knows how to buy herself time, trading damage for damage when she knew that she couldn't fight the army. All right, time to go do damage for damage. Trade a base for a base. Mm-hmm. And we're getting right into it, right into our next game. It will be on Vani Research Station. Scarlet versus Huck. How do you feel about this map with this matchup? Ooh. You know, this this map, I've talked about it earlier when we were playing or when we were watching uh, Jon Snow play. And, uh, you know, I was talking about how the natural is very vulnerable. I mean, for all races, if, he, if Jon Snow went mass muta, you know, the natural's vulnerable for, uh, for a Terran or Protoss, but... Just just like Mass Muta is is really powerful because you can you can just lean on that natural and it's so tough to defend. War Prism is equally strong, and what we typically see against high high level Korean Zergs are just a mass number of spine crawlers at that natural to ensure its survival. So we'll mm. see what Scarlet does or uh, or positions her overlords to ensure that she never gets caught off by War Prism because if you get if you miss a single war prism, it can kill that natural. And if you lose that natural, mm. it's just then he, Huck can just start leaning on the fourth base, and and it's bad news bears. 
Bad News Bears. I couldn't have said it better myself. We have in this game next on Vani Research Station spawning in the top center of the map. It's EG's Huck. And spawning in the bottom center, it's Acer's Scarlet. Now, here we begin. Uh, I've seen a lot of little funny shenanigans used with the gold base by Zerg. Um, we'll see if we see you know anything like that. One set coming out for Scarlet. We want to make sure that Scarlet is 100% comfortable with what's going on in her game. Got all those settings right, so we're just going to give her that second. And um, but yeah, so. Lenok has been taking a lot of uh, a lot of gold bases and and things like that, and I've heard talk of uh, Artosis specifically saying that you know the Zerg taking the gold base very quickly uh, can be very effective. However, on this map, the gold base is really really far away and uh, pretty difficult to kind of make that work. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the only time I've personally gone for a gold base, like you said, it's a little too far away to just go for it unless mm. you know maybe the protoss doesn't scout it in time but typically the only time i go for the gold base on this map is if uh the protoss tries to cannon rush me and then it's like okay mm. you get to cannon rush this normal base but while you're cannon rushing this normal base i'm gonna go take the gold and your technology is going to be delayed and so this third this gold base is going to get secured and uh good luck trying to do a follow-up to kill it because any kind of follow-up your cyber core is delayed your warp gates delayed mm. and it's almost obvious that he's going to go stargate and then you kind of just hard counter that by building the extra queens and then you hold and then now all of a sudden you got a gold base so and uh it's a beautiful beautiful thing to have so basically you know just summarize what you're saying is that if that scenario were to happen the pros would always lose just because the technology just isn't there yet you know Right. When you're cannon rushing, you're delaying your gateway. And when you delay your gateway, you're delaying your cyber core. When you delay your cyber core, your work gate's super delayed. So when you look through replays of a Protoss cannon rushing, me or any other Zerg, they'll finish mm. warp gate at like 10 minute mark. And there's, there's no such thing as a seven gate at the 10 minute mark. If you're doing a seven gate at the 10 minute mark, you've kind of already lost. So, well, you know, I just, I just want to correct you. I've done plenty of 10 minute seven <laughs> gates and... Um, just saying, they're uh, they're not too shabby, and uh, <laughs> we do have pretty fast expansions over here. No cannon rush going down. We've got Huck with the gateway expand, and we'll be moving out for the scout uh, pool up in lovely time. But no gas uh, coming down just yet. Going to go instead for this queen, uh, potentially with a quick third. Um, I do think that on this map. The Paras is going to tend to take a little bit faster of that natural base, so opens up that possibility for uh, the quicker third, especially because early on it's really difficult to punish uh, that natural base as you don't have access to the uh, to the air just yet, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised that she took the natural first, but she is doing a fast third, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Really what I was trying to emphasize is that expoing at the, at the bottom of your ramp is actually in my opinion, the better choice, not only because you get your crete spread going sooner, and that's mm. typically what, what casters or a lot of people will, will point out, oh, they're taking the bottom expansion because it's all about crete spread and it helps spread that creep, and that's definitely a big part of it. But it's also, mm. if, you get, if you're getting contained on an early two base kind of, uh, kind of play, and then the Protoss just builds a single force field, with their with their seven gate or something now right. all of a sudden you're stuck in two base where you can never leave your 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 two base because you get stuck where a single force field keeps you on two base forever and uh and that can just instantly lose you the game if if a single force field just contains everything you've got on those two bases and there's just not another map like that so uh so it's almost like you you need to get that hatchery out and going so then that that hatchery is is fortified enough where mm. they can't break it or if they do you've already considerably lost the game yeah and we do have a little bit of a pressure here from huck uh, a couple of lings in response from scott but not all that much uh this hatchery is going to take some significant damage for him uh, before any sort of s significant defense force can come out from Scarlet. it's going to be spreading creep over here and um eight more zerglings on the way 
I was really worried about that Overlord, but it seems like Huck kind of missed it, and now that Overlord's scouting a proxy pylon, which means it's telling Scarlet that that pullback, that Zealot Stalker pullback, is just a bait. Hey, I'm just leaving with my st Zealot Stalker. I'm macroing behind this. Nope. Mm. Scarlet knows what's up, and she's not yep. stopping. Her Roach Warren's almost done. Oh, and she's getting can't. She's gonna kill the proxy. Oh, look at this timing. Warpgate just finishing up and Scarlet should be able to kill off this pylon before the warp in. Totally messed with that. She's super confident queuing up the drones. She has thwarted this attack here and, uh, you know, no foregate aggression out of Huck. He would have really liked to be able to get some damage in, but this puts Huck, uh, excuse me, Scarlet as, at an excellent advantage starting off this game. Yeah, she, she delayed her, her drones, so Huck's been mining some more more in better income than uh, than Scarlet for a solid minute or so, but mm. you know, the mechanics of Zerg, she's kinda equalized again. And she doesn't have a layer out just yet and but if she picks up on this I fast third here. she's about to find out. This overlord's about to find this fast third and she's gonna be able to go up to instant three base income much faster than the thirty eight harvester Huck. And uh, hopefully she can keep spreading this creep and take a fast fourth and go from there yep uh we are seeing yeah another uh round of drones for a second there did see some roaches so a little bit of pressure here but definitely not fully committing uh building those drones behind this is going to be uh i think a, a pretty manageable defense for huck here he's got the photon cannon uh he's got two photon cannons excuse me and um he's in a nice position with his um gateway force over here Scarlet going to make a move, timing it quite perfectly with the speed upgrade for the Zerglings and getting a layer and droning up behind this. Could be a little bit uh, to deal with, but Scarlet takes a look and says, nope, I think that's that's Forced just enough for me. More zealots. That, yep. that's, that's nice, you know. It's better than a couple more gateways and preparing for the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's funny, right? Because that warp gate mechanic functions sometimes in a similar way to the larva mechanic does for Zerg. You know, you kind of force out, oh, okay, well, I, yeah, you had to make an extra units here that you didn't want to make, and now you don't get to invest in your infrastructure. You know, you don't in get to invest in your late game quite as hard as you may have liked to. Absolutely, because as we all know, I mean, centuries are amazing, but everything else out of the warp gate is a composition, an army composition that's just not sustainable so forcing out more zealots and more stalkers uh you know is, is great if you're doing some kind of three base blink stalker and that's your your strategy but i don't think that's mm. that's huck's intention yep and this is going to be an easy game. deny both armies out of position here and it looks like great position scarlet, huck. <laughs> scarlet very much taken by surprise very obviously so yeah. with the o face in the chat <laughs> on over here attacking uh, forward got the uh, reserving in position nice force fields from Huck yeah. and this is absolutely brutal lots of units queuing up but in the meantime damage coming through from Huck moving forward here uh, good positions to drop some force field but running out of energy there yep there it yeah. is the recall it's great say. damage by Huck and that position is just so deadly you get in that mm. position if 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 there was any kind of proxy pylon close enough I'm sh I'm sure Huck would have leaned on it harder, but uh, mm -hmm. but with no backup, did what she did what he could do, and uh, delays that delays that fourth. Just that little bit of delay of fourth is quite nice. Some drones yeah, dead as well. Too. Not losing a whole lot. I don't think too many sentries were lost there. The sentry count is uh, still pretty so. healthy. Yeah, I think Huck only lost one. And mm -hmm. Five drones stop the mining. Stop the mining for a good thirty or so seconds as well. Um, and and when you're getting attacked like that, there's no injects. Chances are, unless Huck, a Scarlet's a god, that she's kind of accidentally delayed her injects in her other bases by a few seconds. So, you know, there's a lot more indirect damage than people uh, initially believe. But I was really surprised when that push happened. She built a Spire and Hydra Den, and you know, I've never thought that as a possibility, but she is doing it. And I wonder yep. what her thought process is. She's going for like every tech. She's got an infestation pit. She's going for a hive. She's got a roach warrant. She's got. She's just got this whole section of her main base. She's like I'm just gonna get all the tech buildings right here in a nice, lovely clump, and it'll be great. I don't have to worry about nukes. And she's uh, getting link upgrades. Uh, she's getting link yeah. upgrades as if she's gonna use. I mean, of course, link counters with upgrades is very powerful, but 
you know, with with the with no Hydra upgrades, but she's getting Hydra range. So she's sticking on these Hydras, but hasn't really gotten upgrades for them. But also wants to kind of get this fast hive going. So she's kind of doing a lot at once. But we'll see if she gets punished for it. Yeah. So far, late game, she's been going for that Infestor uh, Zergling play. So maybe she's sort of not investing too heavily in the ranged units and just using them as sort of this mid game buffer to keep her alive. So she can transition into her. Uh, more preferred unit composition of Infestor Ling. Uh, yeah. Plus two and Blink finishing up here, though. Going to be a little well, bit yeah, scary. I think, I think you made a good point about the Infestors and how much she's been using it in the past couple of games. And I think that's kind of... It's in the back of Huck's mind right now, is that, oh, should I move out with these this small gateway sentry army? I don't have any Colossus. If I get one fungled, I'm just so dead. So he kind of pulled back, and now he's looking to do Zealot Harass at this gold base. Oh, a lot of Zealots here. Just going to try and target it down. It's possible that this hatcher gets killed. It's going to be really close. Uh, and, I mean, at this point in time, it's only, oh, my God, and the hatchery goes That's down. It. Excellently done. Uh, that gold base too, you know, it's not just a normal base that got hurt, it was a gold base, uh, which is a lot of income loss there for Scarlet. However, she's still very much in lead economically, she's going to hold, go ahead and, you know, you kill one of my bases, I put two in its place. She's going to double expand here, and uh, she's got this nice force to defend. Nice little move out here from Huck, got some Link Stalkers, very non-committal, clear out some creep, move back. It's these little, yeah. little pokes and prods here and there. And because of that creed spread, Huck doesn't even know about that that base in the center. If, mm. well, you know, I talk, I keep talking about how you gotta have one creed tumor ahead of your expansions, otherwise you risk losing that expo. And this is just another one of those instances where if if Scarlet's creep was one less tumor in front, Huck would have moved forward one more tumor forward, and that one more tumor forward would have saw that extra base. He probably would have positioned himself just outside the creep and tried to send in like you know some zealots and try and. Force cancel or something. Mm -hmm. but. We have a big force moving out. 11 gates from Huck here to produce off of. Oh, nice hallucinations! Wow. Huck has an issue with hallucinations. He knows how to use them well and uh, to great effect. And in this case, uh, no exception. Keeping those hallucinated Colossus up in the front. Great, great plays. Totally negating those, uh, those early abducts. Well played. Yeah. Force fields are nice as well. A lot of this army is dying. And in the meantime, two nice. Void Rays at the gold base. Really great plays from Huck here. I feel like a, maybe a Warp Prison with that army might have been really helpful, though, because he didn't have any Warpins to help with that fight. And mm. one of the biggest, I feel like, one of the biggest strengths of, of Protoss is in the middle of the fight. Right on type of right on top of the fight, you can warp in units. And if he had another round of zealots, I think he would have kept one of his archons alive, kept one of his archon uh, immortals alive. And now we're seeing he only has one immortal, one archon. And, uh, and you know that's it's important to have these void rays, archons, immortals. But it's it's not the exact army he wants to be able to just move across the map and win. And we're seeing Scarlet now doing a muta that switch and because that traded the army done. because. Yep, we lost all those mid-game ranged units, and now we're going into Scarlet's late game with the melee upgrades and the uh, air attacks as well. Moving in, nice little bit of micro there, trying keeping as many of these middleists alive as possible. Four, <laughs> four stalkers get warped in, but that is not going to cut it. Uh, I believe we have a large stalker force coming in to try and deal with this, but again, just runs in, kills 14 probes, and says, yeah, what are you going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. And in the meantime, we yeah. also have these Zerglings across the map as well. And she's going to engage here directly into these Stalkers. She might just have enough to kill everything. In the meantime, we do have Lings attacking as well. It's a really difficult situation for Huck. He's got to split exactly the Photon Cannon helping a lot here, uh, as well as more cans warping in. But will it be enough? It does not look like it. This base is yeah. seeming to uh, absolutely fall here. And what are Huck's options? He's not really making too much. Phoenixes are there, but ooh, he loses a Phoenix right away. And at this point, he really needs to be able to ramp up that Phoenix count. He does have two Stargates, but how will he defend them here? Yeah, I mean, I I, I love Muta switches, but this is this is the way you do Muta switches. Mm. When I go Muta switches, I risk potentially a double Stargate pushing me back, like like Huck's trying, but. It, the power of plus two, everything died quicker. Those cannons, the stalkers, the probes, mm. everything died. The Nexus, and uh, and you're seeing just you know, just 
just game ending kind of damage out from Scarlet with these mutas. Absolutely, and just to engaging, he doesn't care. I'm under the photon overcharge. I'm just right in the face of the enemy and just attacking. Super storms all over the place. Ah, oh, just barely not enough. Maybe one more storm or so. Ooh, this Archon is in a nice position, but not too much clumping from Scarlet as a result. And those, uh, those Mutalists heal so, so quickly. And ten more on the way. It's, it's looking real bleak for Huck here. Now, keep in mind, we've got a lot of harass going out on the map, but that is not enough. Scarlet takes the game. GG. Yeah, so I guess we knew what she was doing with that fast spire. And you go fast, you go spire the same time you go hydrogen, and then by the time you do get to muta switch, your plus two is already done. Wow. Now, correct me Perfect if I'm wrong. Perfect timing. That wasn't a 4-0, was it? Uh, is that was that four or just three? I'm hoping it was just three. I think that was. I yeah, that was oh, no. a four zero. That was a four zero. <sighs> well. Well, well played we're by done. Scarlet. And we're How about that? Oh my God. Oh man. You know, it's, it was difficult for me to to tell that it was even a four zero, just because you know it it really that score doesn't reflect the kind of games we had tonight because. They were all so close, you know, going into later stages of the game. Excellent move by both players. You know, really got to commend everyone uh, who came out tonight. The GG's going out in the chat. Thank you, everyone, you know, for tuning in to hang out. Please go ahead and follow uh, this channel. Subscribe to this channel, and you will get a $5 gift card at G2A. That's a site where you can buy video games. And uh, you can also participate in polls. You've got gifts in the chat. Uh, please go ahead and hang out on Hitbox with us. Hitbox, of course, is the sponsor of this tournament. They're the ones who put up the prize pool and make this possible. So give them your love. Give them your support. They absolutely deserve it. Um, I think I think that's about uh, that's about all there is to do. Thank you so much to everyone uh, for tuning in, hanging out. Um, and of course, you know, my lovely co-caster, Sir Robin, the, the bravely bold Sir Robin, uh, you know, uh, and I think, you know, big, big shouts, of course, to the, the tech. We've got Martin, uh, also known as Beast, our tech guy, running the whole thing, pulling all the switches and levers behind the, the curtain. He is the Wizard of Oz in this particular scenario, uh, also doing the observing. Big shout out to all the players as well. And uh, yeah, so... So, Robin, uh, where can people find you and uh, and follow you? What are you going to be up to? Ooh, well, you can follow me on Twitter at SirRobinSC2, but also check out my uh, Twitch channel, TV slash SirRobin. I actually do a coaching show, Sir Robin Squire <laughs> School, every other Sunday, and it was actually earlier today. So you guys missed out. You'll have to wait a couple weeks. But a uh, raffled coaching show. 20 minutes of free coaching for the winner every 20 minutes a new a new winner and it's a lot of fun definitely uh definitely check me out at twitch.tv slash robin where can they uh where, where can they find you jack attack absolutely and uh you know before we before we close it out we are going to throw ourselves over to fear dragons stream another north american tournament uh so go check that out fear dragon 64 but if if there if there's a thing on the internet and you want to follow me uh, and you want to support me, it's Jack Attack TV. So youtubecom slash TV, Facebook and twittercom slash TV, patreoncom slash TV, you know JackTacktv. TV slash TV. Anything that you want uh, is going to be there. Thank you again to everyone and especially you, the viewers, for tuning in with us and enjoying these epic epic matches between these phenomenal players. We'll be back next week with. More Fight Night. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you soon. See you guys. <laughs> All right, cool.